Hey there, welcome to the second session. In this session, we will learn about the what is GraphQL and why it become popular nowadays. The first question in your mind will be what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a language for API that enable you to query and manipulate your data easily through the intuitive and flexible syntax. GraphQL is an open source data query and manipulation language for API. GraphQL was developed internally by Facebook in 2012 before being publicly released in 2015. It is used in many server-side languages like Java, Node, Ruby, Python, PHP, Go, and obviously .NET too. And API created using GraphQL can easily accessible by almost languages like JavaScript, Android, Swift, Python, PHP, Java, and .NET. GraphQL executes the query using the type you define for your data. We can specify the type supported by the GraphQL service as well as the field within the type. You can easily add the new field and type in the existing API without changing the front-end code or creating the new version for API. GraphQL reduces the number of endpoints required to manage your application. Apps using the GraphQL are faster and stable because they are controlling the data what they are getting, not the server. In GraphQL requests, you specify how to structure the data when it's written by the server. This makes it possible for you to query only the data that you need and in the format that you need. This results the better network utilization and performance, especially on the mobile devices. It also makes possible to access the many sources in a single request, which reduces the number of network calls and bandwidth requirement, therefore saving the battery life, CPU cycle consumed by your application. Using GraphQL, we can build the application that relies on the real-time data, just like social media or a chat, by enabling the subscription. Here are some of the popular sites that use the GraphQL for either internal purpose or the public API. Here is a very small list, but, but it is used by the many other sites. Throughout this series, we will use the GitHub's public API for understanding how we can query your data. Stay tuned for the next session.